Hello guys, today's topic is June Economics Paper 1, Grade 12. So I'm just going to be answering this question paper. So in order for you to benefit from this video, you should pause the video. How do you do that? After I'm done asking the question, pause the video and try to do it on your own and then you start listening to me. So this is how you can benefit from the video. So guys, make sure you listen very carefully. As I'm beginning, I don't want to waste any time. I don't want to waste any time. So I am beginning. Uh, section A, question 1. And by the way, before I begin, if you want explanation, I'll leave on a description. I'll leave explanations on a description. You can just go there and click the link and you will listen to explanations of economics. Like I, I have explained perfect market and imperfect market. I've explained a lot of topics. So if you are interested in explanations, you can just go to the description and click the link and go there. And I've also made a video on how you can get a distinction in economics. If you want study tips on how you can study economics, it's very important that you guys get the study tips. So go to the description and click the link and go learn the study tips. So I don't want to waste any time. So let's begin. Section A, question 1, 1.1. 1 .1. Various options are provided as possible answers to the following question. Choose the answer and write only the letter A or D next to the question number. So all of us know this. 1.1.1, uh, 1 .1 .1, 1 .1, what is the answer? National income will increase when? National income will increase when? Uh, you can look at here. Uh, I will try to zoom the question paper, guys, so that you can see properly. So the brightness is full, and I hope you guys can see the question paper. I really, really hope that you can see. So just look at the 1.1.1. .1 Which one is it? It's B. It's import, uh, as you can see, I plus G plus X, which is export, and then S plus T plus M. This is it. This is B. 1.1.2, one of the biggest challenges when calculating the national income figures is biggest challenges when calculating uh, the national income figures. What is it, guys? It's double counting. That's the biggest challenge. And then 1.1.3, the exchange rate system whereby market forces have absolute control is called the mm, exchange rate system. The exchange rate system where market forces have absolute control. They have absolute control. So it's obviously not fixed. It's not managed floating. And it's not absolute. It's free floating. It's B. 1.1.4 aggregate supply in the economy can be stimulated by. It can be stimulated by what? Uh, by B. By not B, guys. It's by D. Um, yes, it's improving the efficiency of the markets, not the inefficiency. It's improving the efficiency. It's D. 1.1.5 uh, uh, The institution that provides parliament with annual written report on the standard of financial management of each government department. Which one is it? Uh, remember, this is the annual written report. So, most of the people who are doing accounting already know what I'm talking about. It's C. Uh, it's Auditor General. Uh, 1.1.6. Public goods where free riders are excluded through fees, charges, or tolls are mm, goods. What is this one? It's collective goods. It's A. 1.1.7. When a currency is, mm, interest rate can be decreased, which will result in an outflow of foreign currency. What happens when um, interest rates can be decreased? Decreased. Remember, interest rates are decreased now. What, what's going on with our current? It's um, undervalued. It's undervalued. Not depreciated. Undervalued. 1.1.8. 1 and by the way, guys, I'm going to show the answers on the screen after I'm done answering. So, 1.1.8. Uh, the typical fluctuations of a business cycle will be or n typical uh, fluctuations of the business cycles are downswing and through upswing peak which is d so that's it guys uh we are going to uh, 1.2 now 1.2 
Choose a description from column B that matches the item in column A. Write only the letter A or I next to the question numbers. A 1.2.1 progressive tax system. Which one is it, guys? Um, let me zoom the screen so that you guys can see. Um, I'll take this one here and I'll zoom the screen so that everyone can see what I'm talking about. And yeah, so I hope you guys can see. All of you can see. Uh, progressive uh tax system. So what is it, guys? Check carefully, guys. It's D. Leave it according to the amount end. That's progressive tax system. And 1.2.2 national account aggregates. Uh, which one is this one? This is I. A summary of a country's um, the economic activity of production, income, and expenditure. And 1.2.3 amplitude. And this is uh, G. This is G, difference in the value of total output between a peak and a through. 1.2.4, portfolio investments. Which one is this one? It's A, purchase of assets such as shares or bonds where the investor is interested only in expected financial return on the investment. And 1.2.5, um, which one is this one? Is actually a medium-term expenditure framework which one is this one guys it see shows the government's projected income and expenditure for three years and then 1.2.6 is special drawing rights this one is uh h and uh, this is h uh, an international reserve asset created by the imf to supplement the official reserves of its member countries and 1.2.7 is e which is system of national account. This is a system of national account. It's E, uh, international guidelines for developing and reporting statistics comparable across countries. And 1.2.8, it's F, which is macroeconomics. Uh, this F studies the behaviors and performance of the economy as a whole. So this one is actually a, a straightforward one and... You shouldn't get this one wrong, guys. Macroeconomics, you shouldn't get it wrong. And, guys, it's very important that you listen to these things. Listen very carefully. Because they might appear on your examination. So, listen very, very carefully, guys. And memorize them. Memorize them. And now we are going to 1.3. Uh, 1.3. Give one term for each of the following descriptions. Write only the term next to the question number 1.3.1, 1.3.6 in the answer book. Abbreviations, economies, and examples will not be accepted. Ah, okay. 1.3.1, guys. Uh, a small initial increase in spending produces a proportionately larger increase in aggregate national income. So, guys, I want to be honest with you, guys. If you actually don't know this one, you have to go and study hard. Because this one, uh, I think the teachers actually preach this one every day. So, if you don't know this one, you have to go and study, guys. Uh, it's, you're going to have a, a problem, seriously, with writing the whole question paper. So, this one is multiplier. 1.3.2, an indication of the general direction of the economy. This is an indication of the general direction of the economy indication of the general direction so right now when we talk about direction you should uh, think what are we talking about this is a trend line 1.3.3 cash reserve requirements and uh, cash reserve requirements uh, this is cash reserve requirements actually I've, I've studied this one this is the action by the south african reserve bank to occasionally change the balance that banks are required to maintain i'm sure this this is actually a cash reserve a requirement uh most of you knew that so that uh, i won't stick to it i won't stick to it 1.3.4 a deliberate downward adjustment to the value of a country's currency relative to another currency so what is this one downward adjustment to the value of the country's currency this one um is actually a, a easy one guys you have to get this one right and yeah you have to get this one right I, I i will be honest too here and if you get this one wrong you have to go study hard 
you have a problem you have to go study hard you don't know economics so you have to go study hard because this one is actually uh, a similar to grade 10 works work this is similar to grade 10 work even a grade 10 learner can get this one right so this is a deliberate downward adjustment to the value of a currency a value of a currency is going down what is that this is devaluation uh, 1.3.5, a model which shows the relationship between tax rates and tax revenue. This is Lafa Kev. Uh, 1.3.6, a government policy that uses government expenditure and taxes to influence economic activity. This is fiscal policy. So, this is it, guys. So, guys, um, when you're studying economics, uh, discipline is very, very important. You have to study hard when you study economics. You can't just cram or something like that or try to use shortcuts. You can't just uh, do that when it comes to uh, economics. You can't just do that. So you have to have discipline. That's why sometimes I'm, I'm being hard on you. It's very important that you have discipline, not motivation. You, ha you have to have discipline. Okay, guys, this is section B, uh, question two, uh, microeconomics. Answer the following questions. Uh, let's go, guys. Uh, we are going to pick question two. Obviously, you have to pick only two questions out of three. And answer the following question. Name any two turning points of the business cycle. Pick and through. Everyone knows this. Uh, 2.1.2. How can a larger marginal per per city to save MPS affect the size of the multiplier? How? It reduces the size of the multiplier as less is available to spend. And yeah, uh, two point two. Study the table below and answer the questions that follow. So guys, look at the table very carefully, and make sure you study it. Study the table, guys. Study the table, and look at the table very carefully. Uh, I'm sure you guys are done. You can just pause the video and look at the table. What method of calculation is used in the table above to determine the cost domestic product? What method? Look at the table carefully and you will see what method is used. It's income method, uh, GDP method, it's income method. 2.2.2, uh, name the missing item labeled A. What is the missing item, guys? It's gross value added at basic price. GVA at basic price. So you can just say that. GVA at basic price. That's a missing value. So memorize this one. Remember that when they ask about this one, you already know. Briefly describe the term subsidies on the production. Um, subsidies are production referred to subsidies that are not linked to specific goods or services, e.g. subsidy made on employment. 2.2.4. Uh, How will you convert GDP to GNP? Uh, by adding primary income from the rest of the world and subtracting primary income to the rest of the world gdp plus primary income from the rest of the world minus primary income to the rest of the world that's it that's another explanation by the way and you can just say by adding primary income from the rest of the world and by subtracting primary income to the rest of the world just remember those words um, then you are going to 2.2.5. Calculate the value of GDP at the market price for 2021. Show all calculations. So I don't know whether I should show calculations here. Um, so uh, I will show calculations on the screen as I always do. So this is it, guys. Um, as you can see, it's uh, 5,572,608. Plus 633,854 minus 13,965 equals to 6,192,497. Is equals to 6,192,497. So these are the amounts uh, that work. So you can check there. Uh, where do we get the amount? You can check on the table, guys. You can just check on the table. Um, uh, it is when we are calculating uh, the value of GDP at the market price for 2021. Uh, and they say specifically, uh, they say 2021. I'm sure you by now you know. We took, uh, as you can see, we took uh, the GVA and then we, uh, we plus it with the 
taxes on products and then we minus it with a subsidies on product then we got the answer on 2021 we are talking about 2021 so remember when we talk about um these things about the, when they say calculate the value of gdp we talk about these things we talk about taking uh, the gva and also the taxes on products we plus them together and then we minus the subsidies every time we talk about subsidy we minus please don't make a, a mistake that's uh, obvious please don't do that every time we talk about subsidy we minus so this is it guys uh, we are going to here uh, study the information below and answer the questions that follow uh i won't really read this uh, all of this you can just pause the video and read it by your own 2.3.1 uh name the parastestal refer to the above information so um if you get this one wrong guys you just need to go back to grade 8 this is scom 2.3.2 who is indirectly responsible for bailing out state owned enterprises in south africa the taxpayer briefly describe the concept privatization the concept when the government transfer the functions activities and ownership from the government to the private sector and 2.3.4 explain the inefficiencies as a fixture of public sector failure so what is it inefficiency lead to a wasting of state funds and resources that is how you explain it uh, 2.3.5 how could state-owned enterprises contribute towards expanding the economy how could they contribute uh, by creating more jobs opportunities and appointing competent management offering skills development programs to improve productivity of existing workers and there are others on the screen that i will show and you are going to the long ones right now guys briefly discuss leading and core incident indicators as features underpinning forecasting this is eight marks guys this is eight marks so we have to be serious here uh, we are going to start with leading economic indicators. That's why it's important that you guys study. These are indicators that change before the economy changes. Coincide with the reverence turning point. They give consumers, uh, businesses and policy makers a glimpse of where the economy is headed. And there are others on the screen guys. I will make sure I show them. Uh, coincident economic indicators coincident economic indicators uh, they move at the same time as the economy if the turning point of a specific time series variable coincide with a reverence turning point it indicates the current state of the economy e.g retail sales so that's it so you give to two um and they have to be as detailed as possible so that you can get uh, the eight marks so you just give to two leading in economic indicator and also coincident economic indicator and so now you go to 2.5 how can south africa reduce imports in order to, uh, to correct the balance of payment bop deficit okay uh, south africa can reduce imports in order to correct uh, the balance of payment which is bop deficit by increasing the interest rate to discourage the domestic expenditure including important goods and services increasing the indirect taxes such as personal income tax to reduce households disposable income and discourage their expenditure on imports imposing imports tariffs and duties to make imported goods and services more expensive and reduce domestic expenditure on them reducing the availability of foreign exchange to discourage domestic expenditure on imports so that's it guys that's uh 2.5 so uh we have to pick uh, two questions and right now we are going to uh, skip question three. I'm going to skip question three. Uh, yeah, I'm going to skip question three. I just don't want to do question three, guys. And I just don't want to do question three. I will do the easiest one, which is question four. Remember, you have to uh, choose the easiest one. And I find monetary policy and business cycles very easy. So... When you talk about business cycles, guys, I, I'm sure you, you also uh, find it easy to write uh, business cycles and everything. So, let's go. Um, 
Question 4, macroeconomics, answer the following questions. Name any two instruments of monetary policy, interest rates, cash reserve requirements. 4.1.2, can ineffectiveness result in public sector failure? Um, okay, targets that are missed with regard to inflation growth and employment, it can result in public sector failure. So that's when they result in public sector failure. It's only two marks, so you can only give one. 4.2, read the extract below and answer the questions that follow. So guys, you can just pause the video and read the extract by your own. Okay, uh, 4.2.1. Name the period of business cycle during which the level of economic activities increase. Uh, what is this one, guys? What is this one? It's expansion. This is expansion. Mention one type of business cycle. One type, just one, guys. One type. Uh, my favorite one is kitchen cycle, so you can just say kitchen cycle, and there's also Kuznets, and I'm sure all of you memorize those ones. Uh, Four point two point three. Briefly describe the concept business cycle. The concept business cycle. Successive periods of increasing and decreasing economic activities. Remember, guys, when I say these answers, you have to memorize them, guys. You have to memorize them. Uh, 4.2.4, how can natural disaster influence fluctuations in business cycle? How can? How can? Tell me. Uh, bad weather can influence fluctuations by reducing the productivity of the agricultural sectors, hence causing the downturn in the economy, causing contractions in the business cycles because of a decline in the supply of agricultural products. That's it. Uh, you only give a uh, one. Four point two point five. How has the Keynesian or indigenous school of thought influenced business cycle? So many of you will get this one wrong, especially if you didn't study. Uh, the Keynesian view is that markets are inherently unstable. Therefore, government intervention is necessary to stabilize the economy. They argue that changes in the value of total expenditure bring about changes in the demand. And there are also other answers on the screen. So we are going here. Uh, study the information below and answer the questions that follow. Okay, guys, uh, let's begin. Uh, 4.3, you can study here. Study the information below and answer the questions that follow. You can pause the video for yourself and check. So, um... The first question says, identify the institution responsible for publishing the data above. Uh, this is um, this is Statistics South Africa. Uh, yeah, this is one. Statistics South Africa. Uh, 4.3.2. What is the trend in the index of import prices? Um, as you can see by your own self and by your own eyes, this is a, uh, this is a, a decline or a decrease. Uh, 4.3.3, briefly describe the concept term of trade. Okay. Uh, the ratio of the index of export prices to index import prices. Um, or the relationship between export prices and import prices. So those are the just explanation. And also it expresses a country's export prices in terms of its import prices. So I gave you three, guys. I gave you three. Uh, okay, 4.3.4. What can uh, bring an improvement in the country's terms of trade? Okay, what can? An increase in export prices or a decrease in import prices? 4.3.4. Uh, calculate the terms of trade for March 2022. A. Show all calculations. Okay, I'll show all calculations here on the screen. I hope you guys can see. Terms of trade, index of export prices and index of import prices multiplied by 100. So this this is it, 109,7 and uh, 107,7 and multiply by 100. You put it that way on the screen, then this is 101,8. This is 101,8. So I hope you guys have seen. Um, this is it, guys. And by the way, if you have any questions, you can just ask on, on the comments down below. And for those uh, who understand, they can just... Uh, answer those on the comments and if nobody's answering you i'll just uh, answer you by myself 
uh, 4.4. Briefly discuss absolute and comparative advantage as a supply resins for international trade. And as I've said, if you want explanation, you go to the description, guys. Don't just ask me something I've explained before. Go to the description and click the link there. And I've done many explanations about economics. So you can just go there and watch uh, the videos there. So I don't want you guys to ask something I've explained before. Briefly discuss the absolute and comparative advantage as supply resins for international trade. Okay. Absolute and comparative advantage. Uh, let's go guys. Absolute advantage means the country can produce that good or service better than anyone else at a lower cost. A country with an absolute advantage makes economic gains by specializing in what it does best. Okay. They only need to. Comparative advantage. The principle of comparative advantage states that under certain conditions, two countries can gain more trade if one of them is more efficient than the other in producing everything. Comparative advantage uh, introduces opportunity cost as a factor for analysis in choosing between different options for production diversification. So that's it. You will see the other ones on the screen. Uh, 4.5. Why is price stability important to prevent extreme fluctuations in the business? Okay, why is it important, guys? Tell me, why is it important? Uh, let me just go here. Uh, why it is important, guys? Uh, price stability is important in preventing extreme fluctuations in business cycles because it contributes to high levels of economic activities and employment, improves the transparency of the price mechanism, so that people can recognize changes in relative prices without being confused by changes in overall price. So that's it. Um, you give uh, to two. That's eight marks. You give to two. You give uh, uh, you give to two on uh, four point four, and here you have to give uh, eight. You have to give uh, not two, uh, not eight. Actually, you have to give four, so that you can get the eight marks. Um, Allows people to make well-informed consumption uh, decision. Encourages foreign investment to promote growth. So you'll see the other ones on the screen. So that's it. And we are going to section C, guys. Section C. Uh, okay. As I've said, guys, you have to pick the easiest one. So which one is the easiest one here? Is it question 6 or question 5? Uh, which one will you go for if you were writing and... You should think carefully which one will you go for. For me personally, uh, both of them, they are, mm, they are almost equal. So, but uh, I'll go for the first one. First one. Okay, guys. Introduction. Introduction. So, we are starting question five. Discuss in detail the market within four sector model. How can the business sector contribute more positively to the economy? Okay. Introduction. Market coordinate economic activities and determine prices for goods and services. That's introduction. Uh, good uh, product or output uh, market. And we are starting, guys. Uh, these are the four sector model. Um, so this is the main part. Um, I hope you guys are uh, listening very carefully. Um, these are the markets for consumer goods and services. In economics, a distinction in, is made between goods and services. Goods are defined as any tangible items such as food, clothing, and cars that satisfy some human wants or needs. Buying and selling of goods that are produced in the market include capital goods, uh, markets uh, for trading and building machinery, consumer goods market for trading and durable, consumer goods, semi-durable consumer goods, and non-durable consumer goods. Services are defined as non-tangible actions and includes wholesale and retail transport and financial markets. Flows of private and public goods and services are real flows and they are accompanied by counter flows of expenditures and taxes on the products and markets. Uh, factors uh, or input markets. Factors and production are bought and sold in the factor market. The factor market includes labor, property, and financial market. Factor services are real flows and they are uh, accompanied by counter flows of income on the factor market. Financial market, uh, they are not in, uh, directly involved in production of goods and services but act as a link between households and the business sector and the other participants with surplus funds. Banks and insurance 
uh, companies and pension funds from the part of the financial market. Money market in the money market, short term loans and very short term funds less three years are saved and borrowed by consumers and business enterprises. Products sold in the market are bank dependencies, treasury bills and the SARP in the key institution in the money market. Capital uh, market. Uh, in the capital market, long-term funds, three years or longer, are borrowed and saved by consumers, businesses, and the Johannesburg Security Exchange is a key institution in the capital market. Products sold in the markets are mortgage, bonds, and shares. Uh, foreign exchange market. Uh, on the foreign exchange market, businesses buy or sell foreign currencies to pay for import goods or services. This transaction uh, occurs in the banks and consists of an electronic money transfer from one account to another. The most important foreign exchange ma markets are London or New York or Tokyo. The SA rent is traded freely in these markets when a person buys traveler checks to a travel abroad. Imports and exports are real flows. They are accompanied by counterflows of expenditure and revenue on the foreign exchange market. Okay, guys. Now we are going to the additional part and... Listen very carefully as we are going to the additional part. Uh, how can a business sector uh, contribute more positively to the economy? Invest in more labor uh, intensive projects which focus on in service training and skills development workers. Reinvest in their profits in cost capital formation, uh, programs, equipment, tools, transportation, assets, and electricity. Expanding their business operation and investing in the latest technology to ensure the upliftment of the quality of vectors of production needed for the production. Diversifying their business operations by bringing in differentiated uh, product offering within or outside the range they produce. Support South African businesses in terms of procuring raw materials and increasing the market share for South African produced goods and services locally and abroad. Okay. This is it. You see the others on the screen. Conclusion and conclusion. Markets are critically important institutions in the, our economic system because they regulate the market to safeguard price stability and general business confidence. So, guys, this is it. Um, this was the easiest paper uh, for us. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the paper and I hope you guys listened very, very carefully and. I'll make sure uh, I release a video on how um, you could study for economics paper one so that you can improve or be ahead of others. So make sure you guys uh, subscribe to the channel. Or if I've already released the video, you can check on the description. I will just put the link over there. If not, you will see later. So guys, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You like the video, share the video to other learners who really need this information. Don't be selfish, share the video. So guys, subscribe, share the video. Peace.